Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 15.5 to the public. This is available to all iOS 15 supported devices from the iPhone 6s all the way up to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and is available at the same time everywhere around the world. Now this particular update can vary greatly depending on whether or not you're a beta tester or you're installing it coming from iOS 15.4.1, meaning that it could be anywhere to five gigabytes or it could be as little as a gigabyte or so depending on your device. So it just varies depending on what device you're using and what version you're actually coming from. Now, along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 15.5, a watch OS 8.6, along with TV OS 15.5, Mac OS 12.4 and HomePod OS 15.5. All of those are available now. Now, as far as the build number, let's take a look at that and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings then we'll go to general, then about, you can see the build number is 19 F 77. And this particular update is the same version that you had if you were on the release candidate, meaning that if you're a beta tester, you just had it about a week earlier. So, so just uninstall the beta profile reboot and you'll already be on the final version. If you're not on a beta test, then you should have the update. Now, as far as what's new, well, this particular update does have a modem update in it. If you're coming from the public version of iOS 15.4.1 or earlier, meaning maybe you were having issues with connectivity, switching between 4G and 5G that's been updated as well in, in this update. So hopefully that's better if you were having issues with it. As far as new features and changes, well, the first thing has to do with Apple wallet. So if we go into the wallet app within the wallet app, you'll see we have Apple cash. If you have an Apple cash card, you can now send and request money. You see the options here where you can press send or request, and you have those options built in. Now, if you go to pay at a terminal, they've updated the card as well. You'll see if we want to pay, it says debit visa. Prior to this, it was Discover. So now it's Visa and they've just changed the networks that it works from. Also within messages, they've updated it. So it now says Apple Cash. You have an Apple icon in cash where before it said Apple and pay. So nothing huge, but that's below where you actually put in your text messages. You can just tap and then you can pay directly from Apple Cash if you're paying to someone that can receive it. So that's been updated. And then also being tested on Apple's own campus, you'll soon be able to tap to pay using your phone to another phone. So that's something that's built into the code that's not yet available, but that's something coming in the future. Now, as far as other updates and changes, well, there's changes to podcasts. So if you use Apple's podcast app, there's some new settings under settings and then podcasts under podcasts, you'll see automatically download. Now you have the option to delete more of those shows after you've downloaded them based on a time duration. So you can have it download and keep the latest episode per show, two, three, five, ten episodes per show, or the last 24 hours, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, or all episodes. And you'll see below, it says remove older automatic downloads by limiting how many are kept on this phone. This default setting will not affect shows with customized settings. So that's something they've updated in 15.5. Also within weather, they've updated updated it. So if we go into weather and you're in your local area indicated by the little arrow here, make sure you're there, scroll down. If we scroll down, keep scrolling, you'll see it says report an issue. There's a new box here before this was just text. And now you can report an issue within weather. So if we tap on see more, you'll see that we can report the overall conditions, whether it's sunny has sleet or snow report the temperature, wind, air quality, and other conditions, and also give a description of what it's like, whether it's chilly, pleasant, unpleasant, dry, calm, and so on. So that's something that's new in 15.5 before it was just a text. And now it's a box that indicates that you can actually report the overall conditions. Now with iOS 15.4, we gained universal control, but it was in beta. So on the iPad, if you have a supporting iPad that uses universal control, you'll see if we go to general and then airplay and handoff, it says cursor and keyboard prior to this, it actually said beta. So this used to be in a beta. Now it's final. It should be complete and should no longer have any issues if you were having those. So it says, allow your cursor and keyboard to be used on any nearby Mac signed into your iCloud account. It just used to say beta. Now it's complete and no longer in beta. Now, if you play a lot of games on your iPad or your iPhone and you use maybe a controller such as PS5 or an Xbox controller, well, on the PS5 controller, developers can now enable the trigger 
triggers to actually give feedback. So where the PS5 DualSense adaptive triggers work really well on a PS5, developers can now implement those changes and give you feedback through the triggers if they want to set that up within this update. So that's up to the developers. Hopefully we'll see that utilized in future games. So it's great if you've ever used these triggers, they give incredible feedback and it just adds to playing a game with the controller. Now there's also additional support for passkey technology and passkey technology allows you to log into a website more easily. So if maybe you go into Safari and you go into a different website that allows you to log in, it can now use passkey technology to just use face ID and log you in quickly. Now this has to be enabled by the developers. So it may take a while for us to see this, but now the support is there in 15.5 where a developer can enable that. Now also for developers, there's some new features. If maybe you want to test for overall all throughput. And in order to see these, you can go into settings and in order to see these new settings, you have to go into developer, but to see that you need to connect to a computer and open up Xcode and then plug in your iPhone. So we'll do that here. Once you have Xcode open, just plug in your iPhone and give it just a moment here. And if we scroll down, keep scrolling, you'll see developer options are there now. So these will pop up once you plug this in with Xcode open and under developer, you can see here, if we scroll down, we now have an option for run throughput test. If we go into run throughput test, you can now run ping packet loss tests, idle ping latency, download speed or upload speed. So this just helps with developers testing the overall latency and throughput when they're trying their app out. So it's nice to see them add that. Now there's also additional features for developers built in that have to do with share play where we have a nice icon where we can share maybe when we're in the TV app. So if we go into TV and maybe we want to share an episode with a friend, so maybe we want to share the show severance and we have this nice share play icon developers or third party developers can now add that option where you have that nice icon as well. Now, additionally for developers, they've added C 20 and C 23 features that have been added in the code for developers. So they can utilize those as well. Now within this update, there's some bug fixes also. And the one thing that they mention has to do with home automations. So maybe in the home app, you're using automations. And sometimes when you arrive or leave, you can have that trigger in automation prior to this update. Sometimes that could fail. So maybe you had it set to unlock your door lock when you arrive home and it just wouldn't work sometimes, or when you leave, it doesn't lock automatically that should be resolved in this update. So that's something they've resolved. Now, as far as the storage bug that many people have been having, as far as excess storage being used, it looks like that's resolved in this update. If we go to general and then we go to iPhone storage, give it a moment to load here. We'll let it load here. And also on the iPhone 11, it seems to load much faster on the iPhone 11. So we'll give it just a second here. And if we scroll all the way down, the storage bug resulted in massive amounts of system data being used that seems to be resolved in this update for most people where it's using between four and 10 gigabytes. This can actually change over time and will update over and over as needed, but typically it should be using between about five to 10 gigabytes, sometimes more, but many people were reporting that prior to this update, it could use as much as 50 gigabytes. So most people are reporting. It seems to be better as far as the phone overheating or getting too warm for some people, this seems to be resolved in 15.5, according to most people that have used the earlier versions. And then also Apple has mentioned a few things they've resolved as well. They've resolved three issues and two of them have to do with matter accessories within the home app. So if your accessory supports matter, those issues should be resolved. And then also store kit issues have been resolved. So those are more developer facing, but those should be resolved as well. There are some known issues as well. And the first one has to do with music. Apple has publicly acknowledged this and you'll see here on the iPhone 11, I have Spotify in the bottom, right? Now, maybe I want to download Apple music. We'll do that in the app store. You'll see it starts to download and it's replaced Spotify in the dock without me changing the icon, even though I haven't removed Spotify. This is an odd bug, but it replaces whatever you had in the dock as far as music and we'll just put it back in its original location. So it's something that's a bug. Again, it's been acknowledged by Apple. Also within the notes, there's 10 known issues that they've mentioned also to do with matter accessories. Well, those matter accessories work, but now you can pair up to five matter accessories. So there's still a bug where it's not fixed 
There's also additional issues with health when maybe trying to add blood oxygen features from within the app. It could crash and then purchasing or downloading content again from iTunes or maybe the TV app sometimes could fail. And Apple says to reboot the device in order to resolve that issue. Additionally, there's also issues with conversation transcripts where they wouldn't scroll after maybe viewing a, a photo in quick look. So you pressed and hold on the photo and then sometimes it wouldn't work. You'd have to back out of that conversation and reopen it. And then also emergency SOS call with five presses may still be disabled for all users outside of India to fix an issue that caused this setting to unintentionally default for some. Now it seems to be working for me if I do five presses here. So one, two, three, four, five, I can swipe to go to emergency SOS. So it seems to be working, but it won't just work by default. There were some bugs with it and it still seems to be an issue. There's also additional bugs that may affect developers as well. So that's something that Apple needs to resolve and hopefully they'll get that resolved within the next version. Now, as far as security updates, Apple always updates security on every version of iOS. And you can see those security updates by going to Apple's security website. So on Apple's security website, if we scroll down after they release the update, it takes a little bit for them to update this site for some reason. So within the next couple of hours, expect it to be updated with all of their security updates as well, where they'll tell you one by one what's resolved as far as that goes. Now that leads me to, should you install iOS 15.5? And I would say absolutely. If you're coming from iOS 15.4.1 due to security updates, additional features and bug fixes, and most people saying it has a positive impact on their battery, I would definitely recommend installing it. So if you haven't installed it already, I would recommend that. As far as battery life goes, it's been pretty good overall. Most people are getting through a day without a problem. And if we go into my battery, battery health you'll see is at 100%. I put this on the charger at night, every night, and charge it in my car wirelessly. So I don't do anything special, but it seems to last just fine. You'll see my battery life, depending on the day here, when I was using previous versions, We'll give it this day. I had two hours and 39 minutes of screen on time, four hours and 48 minutes of screen off time with 50% of my battery life left. However, I'm getting through the day with at least 50% left by the end of the day. So really I've had no issues with it. I haven't had to pay attention to it too much. You'll see, depending on the day, it varies greatly. So today, one hour and eight minutes, three hours and 55 minutes of screen off time. And I've used well, maybe only 10% of my battery or so. So it's doing quite well that way. As far as performance overall, performance seems to be great. Whether that be on an older phone, such as the iPhone 8 Plus or a newer phone, scrolling is fast, going into different games such as Minecraft, you'll see here, we'll give it a second to load. Give it just a moment here. There we are, we'll resume and we're in. Frame rates look to be good. There's no issues here and it seems like it's running just fine. It actually loaded nice and fast when I actually loaded this map and it seems to be performing as you would expect. So most people with these updates that were running the betas and the release candidate have said that it was really performing really well on older devices as well, including the iPhone 6S and SE. Now, as far as future updates, it's possible we could see iOS 15.5.1 to address those additional known issues that I mentioned before. And then also we could see later this week, iOS 15.6 beta one. Typically, the week they release the public updates, they'll release a beta for the next version, or it could be next week that they release the beta. But typically, we'll have iOS 15 betas all the way up until September, where we'll have iOS 16. So that's normally what Apple does. And then, of course, on June 6th, if you haven't heard already, Apple's having WWDC 2022 or the Worldwide Developer Conference, and that's where they show the next version of iOS and iPadOS and macOS every single year. So we can expect iOS 16 beta one starting on June 6th, and then again, a final release, usually in September around the time of the iPhone 14. And so that's everything in iOS 15.5, not a huge update, but some nice changes and bug fixes. I would expect bigger updates with iOS 16. So expect that hopefully fairly soon in a couple of weeks, we'll see what that entails and we'll see everything in iOS 16. Now, if you found anything else in iOS 15.5, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.